Terraforming is the process of intelligence transforming its surroundings at the scale of the planet. Its history includes a wide range of events, the ongoing human-made changes to the global climate system being an obvious example. But long before the Anthropocene, at different times, different agents have been at the center of the terraforming. For example, the great oxygenation event two billion years ago was driven by photosynthetic cyanobacteria and should qualify as a significant terraforming event. The advent of sexual reproduction over a billion years ago also counts. Another watershed moment in the history of the terraforming occurred some 541 million years ago during an event known as the Cambrian Explosion when a new agent rapidly rose to prominence. Oddly enough, it was the face. Today, faces are everywhere, and the biological and technological layers that cover the planet have been arranged to fit its image. But it's important to remember this hasn't always been the case. The sudden spread of faces was a terraforming event whose consequences are still being felt today. It marked the beginning of the facial age of the terraforming. If this facial age began at a certain point in time, it's likely that it's also going to end at some point in the future. Here, it's critical to note that this is not about the face as personal identity but rather the face as one important platform for changing the environment. From first face to peak face and beyond, this is the story of the facial age of the terraforming. Our story begins with the onset of the Cambrian explosion, the start of the Phanerozoic Eon. To set the scene, picture soft-bodied lumps nestled on the ocean floor with limited mobility, animal life at its pre-Cambrian apex. Then, something happened. Bilateral bodies with left, right, front, and back ends spread across the planet quite suddenly. These bodies were very advantageous, having front ends made directed motion efficient in a way that had not been possible before. As time moved on, it turned out to be very beneficial for front ends to accumulate other organs for smelling, seeing, tasting, and hearing what was going on in the environment. The spread of faces created conditions that selected for more faces triggering an evolutionary arms race that gave rise to curiosities like mineralized shells, limbs, camouflage, and ultimately more faces. The face became a dominant medium through which animals interfaced with their environments. And as animals with faces have come to occupy key positions in most ecosystems, the entire biosphere has adapted to reflect the dominance of faces over millions of years and despite several mass extinctions. The Cambrian explosion then was not just an outburst of animal diversity, but the start of a transformation of the entire face of the earth. As it turns out, the face is an expansive medium that enables many distinctive formations within its maximum and minimum bounds. Different species developed very different kinds of faces specific to their niche. In this evolution, something happened to the human face. It developed a unique capacity for expressivity paired with cerebral wiring dedicated to understanding, interpreting, and responding to the faces of others. This ability, bundled conceptually as the capacity for theory of mind, lies at the heart of what is called behavioral modernity, the suite of traits that distinguish Homo sapiens from the peers and predecessors. 
With the modern human, the face continues as before as a means of pursuing and protecting resources, but with a new level of sophistication and its ability to effectively coordinate social activities that transform the earth. Everything from chairs to highways to phones are arranged for directed motion and a kind of social cognition that uses the face as its main medium. New signals suggest that a decoupling of social cognition from the face is in the works, raising the question of the role of the face in the terraforming moving forward. Because while the human face may have shaped the world for its own convenience, humans are no longer the only form of intelligence fixated on the human face. Facial recognition algorithms and computer vision are now detecting, extracting, modeling, measuring, and classifying faces through different means. Previously, these systems could be considered a form of human intelligence in the sense that they were constrained by the engineering and training of human design models. But more recently, breakthroughs in neural networks and deep learning are diminishing the role of the human in the equation. These new synthetic intelligence systems can now perform in structures of intelligence unrecognizable from our own. For example, the technique known as face hallucination transforms a low resolution image of a face into a high definition one by an automated process of filling in the gaps. It does so based on normalized patterns extracted from a database of faces. While in some ways, face recognition has always been a biotic capability, in that we instinctively detect and classify faces all day long. For algorithmic intelligence, faces aren't simply recognized, they're made recognizable. The irony is that you're not that different from the man in the moon anymore, or from a banana. With machinic intelligence, faces are reduced to surfaces that meet certain criteria without any of the social functions being accounted for. So even as increasing amounts of processing power are spent recognizing and modeling faces, we should understand that the face could be very close to losing its hegemony over social cognition and the terraforming agency that comes with it. Yet even if the face began as an object that enabled subjective awareness, other synthetic systems may be able to support the same functions. What then does this mean for the future of the face and the ways in which the planet has transformed in its image? The insight of the face as one agent of terraforming reveals many possible trajectories for the future of the face. At one extreme end of the spectrum is total and complete facial dominance. What this looks like is faces everywhere and on everything faces literally drilled into the moon. At the other extreme of the spectrum is a global social cognition that preferences facelessness. Faces would not only lose their efficacy, they would become rarities or disappear altogether. In one possible scenario that finds itself somewhere in the middle of these extremes, other media of social cognition become increasingly important, while the face's efficacy diminishes. Breakthroughs in AI research signal the feasibility of new forms of intelligence whose function and structure do not require a face. Falling short of eliminating the face altogether, further developments of faceless machinic intelligence may still require huge shifts in culture and politics. Social cognition, which has up until now been largely bound to the face, may need to be understood in a very different way. Increasingly, we will need to ask who is someone without a face? How will they see others and how should they be seen? What new pressures will faceless intelligences exert on the biosphere? And what pressures will they not exert? In a scenario that embraces increasing polyintelligence, Structural and functional neurodiversity may fundamentally change what's needed to achieve a viable planetarity. 
politics would need to be conducted across many different kinds of intelligence systems that may not resemble each other in the slightest. Personal identity might then cease to be the most important basis for deliberation. Serious planning would be needed to viably support an abundance of different neurologies and interfaces. But if adequate measures were taken, what may follow peak face could be a diversification of behaviors rivaling that of the Cambrian explosion.